Hi and welcome to the next set of lessons in my Classic Licks series. This month, June 2015, we're going to take a look at the blues guitar of Chuck Berry. And Chuck Berry is best known for his rock and roll guitar in the 50s and early 60s. But on quite a few of his albums and on the B-sides of some of his rock and roll hits, he recorded several really great blues songs. And the Chuck Berry style of playing blues guitar is very different than any of the other guys that we've looked at so far. And so I think you might find this interesting. Those of you who've never heard of Chuck Berry's blue stuff, if you've only heard songs like Johnny Be Good, Sweet Sixteen, Oh Carol, and things like that, there are a lot of great blue songs. And I'll mention most of them by name as I go through the lessons. First lesson, I'm going to call this the Chuck Berry Blues Licks Encyclopedia. And in no particular order, I'm just going to go through and show you some real simple licks that you can pull from Chuck Berry's playing. And I have these tabbed out, and I also have the names of the songs that I'll mention, and I have those written on the tabs too. So, here we go. Lick number one. This is what I call a double stop bend, and this is one of the things that Chuck Berry did a lot in his rock and roll playing, but also in his blues playing. We're going to start out in the key of B flat, and this is from a tune called uh, Confessing the Blues. And this was a, a Chuck Berry blues tune. And he does this little lick where he does it. Let me just play it for you one time. And that is a uh, really just based on a single string bend, like a typical blues bend. You do something like this. And instead, he's doubling it up. And what I'm doing is I'm putting my first finger on the 6th fret, 2nd and 3rd strings, and I'm using my ring finger to bend up on the 2nd and 3rd strings at the 8th fret. And I'm coming back and getting the 6th fret. And I'm leading into it. And I'm going back and forth between the 6th fret of the 3rd string and the 8th fret of the 4th string. You can mix that up and do all kinds of variations on that. Different tempos, different things, different speeds, whatever, whatever you want to do. So that's the first thing, a double stop bend. And you can do that anywhere on the neck over the first, first position blues box. The second lick that I have is from a tune called Sad Day, Long Night, and this includes a band that you hear in a lot of Chuck Berry stuff. He's playing this in the key of G. It's an instrumental. And he does this lick here. And that is a real basic Chuck Berry type lick, and, and other guys use this too. Uh, Bill Jennings and Jazz use this lick quite a bit, or something based on this. My first finger, since I'm playing in G, I'm going to show you how to find it in the key. So this is my first position, G bar chord. Here's my second position. And you're going to play this over that second position, G bar chord. My first finger is on the 10th fret of the first string. My second finger is on the 11th fret of the second string. I'm going to hold my first finger there. I'm not going to bend it or move it. And I'm going to bend up on the second string with my second finger. And I'm going to pick the second string, first string. And just keep doing that. And you hear him use that lick in a, in a few different songs. Uh, Wee Wee Hours, which was maybe his most famous blues song, when I think the first side he cut for Chess Records. And then there's another tune called Worried Life Blues, where he plays it up here on the neck. Or maybe it's here. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's an E flat. So he'd play that lick often. So there's another great Chuck Berry lick for you. That's number two. Number three. It's also from the tune, uh, actually n number three, I kind of put two and three together. Two was this one, showing you how to play it in G, and then three was the exact same lick. So let's go to another one for three. This is from Confessing the Blues. So this will be lick number three. And in B flat, I already showed you one lick from the song. He starts out as solo with a very typical Chuck Berry type thing, something like this. Uh, and so this lick, you hear
hear him use that in so many of his different songs. What I'm doing, I'm in B flat. There's my first position, B flat bar chord. I'm putting my pinky on the ninth fret of the first string, and my ring finger is going to be on the eighth fret of the second string. And I like to put my first finger and bar the first and second strings at the sixth fret. I can just control that a lot better with that finger on there too. If I just use these two fingers, I can do it, but it's a little harder to control the thing. And Chuck Berry in his rock and roll playing would often use that same lick in lots of different ways. He'd speed it up, something like that, or he could play it slow. So that is a staple Chuck Berry blues and rock and roll lick, and that's in the key of B flat. All right, the next one that I've got is from, this is a double stop slide. This is another very typical Chuck Berry type thing, and he does this instrumental tune again, Blue Day, or um, oh, what's it called? Sad Day, Long Night. I don't even know what album this was from. I heard this, I just found this on YouTube, or it was on a, a box set that I got of, of CDs with his playing. The key of G, and he does something like this. That's a very common, like a country blues lick, almost like a Lightning Hopkins type thing. But that double stop, Chuck Berry would use that. Songs like School Day and uh, No Particular Place to Go, he would use those double stops constantly. But in this tune, he uses it more in a blues vein. And what I'm doing is, if this is my first position bar chord, I'm going to be playing on the 6th fret of the 2nd string and the 7th fret of the 3rd of the string. I'm going to slide into it from below, and I'm going to pick, pick the third string, then the second string, and then the third string. Then I'm going to slide down to the fifth fret and the third fret of the third string, and end up on the G, which is at the fifth fret of the fourth string. So on the tune, Sad Day, Long Night, at the very end of the song, he does this little lick. That's just like you're playing an E. Very common blues lick. So the double stop is, is something that Chuck Berry uses a lot. There's another tune in B flat called uh, Confessing the Blues. Or is this, um, yeah, it's Confessing the Blues where he does this lick during a stop time. He plays the song goes into the four and it's the same lick just play differently that's a B flat so that's a lick that double stop position that Chuck Berry uses quite a bit now we'll get into some more specific licks from specific songs those are a lot of just basic general licks that he uses that you can use in lots of different ways one thing that I like that Chuck Berry does in a tune called Childhood Sweetheart in the key of E flat so we're gonna have the chord really based on the, or the chord placed at the ninth fret down here with the first finger on the ninth fret of the first and second strings and my second finger on the tenth fret of the third string. And in that position, he's going to do what I'm pretty sure would be him imitating Elmore James, doing an Elmore James lick, not on slide guitar, but on a standard, standard tune guitar. And he does something like this in the solo, Childhood Sweetheart. That's a, an Elmore James lick that you could use in a blue shuffle. So if you're playing an E flat, something like that. Whoops. You can move it to any key. D is where Elmore James played a lot of the times in open D tuning with the slide. But Chuck Berry is kind of imitating that. So what he does is he just takes that chord shape, and my guess is he's playing a two fingered E flat chord with the first finger barring the first and second strings the second finger on the third string, and he's sliding into it from below. And instead of playing the Elmore James version, which is more like, like that, he does this typical Chuck Berry double stop thing where he's flattening out on the 11th fret, second and third strings, and he's hammering in to that E flat 
double stop. He's got his first finger on the ninth fret, second and third strings. He's going to hammer on his second finger onto the third string at the tenth fret, but he's going to pick both the second and third strings. So you hear that this a lot in blues playing, like a shuffle. That kind of lick. It's the exact same thing, just played differently. So and he winds up on the E flat, which is the eleventh fret of the fourth string. So the whole lick. That's how Chuck Berry plays it. You can repeat it, or he does a little variation of it, but that's the, the idea. So he's imitating Elmore James on the standard tuned guitar, which is kind of neat. And that's another one that I picked up that I always liked. Okay, looking at my list. The next one, which I think now we're on number six. This is also from the tune Sad Day and Long Night. And he does this, uh, what I call a sliding double stop. He's in the key of G. And at one point of the song, he does this. And that is another typical Chuck Berry thing that he uses in a lot of his rock and roll tunes. There's a, a song called House of Blue Lights where he does a whole solo verse based on that lick. So it goes like this. And basically what I'm doing, or what I am doing, this is the first position G bar chord. I'm starting with this double stop over the second position G chord. So my first finger is on the 10th fret of the first string. My ring finger is on the 12th fret of the second string. Let me just play the positions. There's the first one. Then he moves it down to, so my first finger is now on the 8th fret of the first string, ring finger on the 10th fret. And he switches to this position, same thing we did for lick number 2, but we're not going to bend anything. We're not going to bend, just play it as a straight double stop. Move that down to, so that first part, and then over the C, the position we started with, this time with the first finger on the third fret of the first string, ring finger on the fifth fret. He does something like this in the blues tune. Before he goes back into the solo, and I think he does this over the one. You have to listen to the tune, Blue Day, Black Night. And this is what I call a sliding double stop, or sad day, sad day, long night. I always get confused because there's other songs with similar titles, so. And those sliding double stops, he uses those in lots of different ways, which leads us to our next example. This is in B flat, and so this will be example number seven, and this is from a tune called Confessing the Blues. And in this tune, at the end of the solo, when he goes to the five, and he's getting ready to go from the five to the four to the one, he does this really cool slide where he does something like this. which is a shuffle in B-flat. So what he's doing, he's going... And again, just those two double stop positions, this one and then the shortened one. So we start out with my first finger is going to be on the 15th fret, first string, and my second finger on the 16th fret. It sounds like he slides into that, maybe from one fret below. So he picks that, and then changes to this position, First finger on the uh, 13th fret of the first string, ring finger on the 15th fret. And he slides to two steps below. Same position. And then I had to listen to this a couple times to catch this. And then instead of going back, I, I thought at first he went back to that original position, but instead he just moves one step below, or one step, yeah, one step above, actually, what he does before, so like this. So I've got my first finger on the 14th fret, ring finger on the 16th fret. And then he takes it all the way down, one step at a time. And 
And so my first finger is going from the 14th fret to the 13th fret. 12th fret. Whoop. And then I'm winding up to the, to the 11th fret. And then I wind up in that second double stop position with my first finger on the 10th fret and my second finger on the 11th fret. So let me do that whole sequence again. It's kind of a melodic double stop thing. And if you practice using these double stops in different combinations, you can play almost any melody. And Chuck Berry would do that a lot. He does a, a song called Merry Christmas Baby, one of my favorites, where he does a, a solo, which is really White Christmas but he plays the melody for White Christmas using mostly double stops. And if I have time here at the end, I'll do that for you. But that's the example here where he works those double stop slides into his solo. So instead of just playing all the... Adds a real nice contrast to your playing. And he walks it all the way to the B flat. What I'm doing here is where it last left off, I'm just going down to, so it's, then over the B flat, which is really an E flat, is that right, E flat, yep, over the E flat, second position bar chord, I'm playing this double stop, and then, which is just a typical Chuck Berry, and then he winds up on the E flat, or the F7. Winds up the solo with that double stop melody thing. So let me play the whole thing through one time. And then back into the, the tune, which is a shuffle. So those two double stop positions. That one, which is kind of a, I'm not even sure what they call that. It's like. A, C position, or if we're playing in G, I just, I remember it from the second position bar chord. And then the other one, with the two fingers, one fret apart. So spread out, two, one. So those two shapes, depending on where you play them, you can play all kinds of melodies with those double stops.